This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on azamsharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and see that how we can display a list of reminders in order to display the reminders, the first thing we need to do is to fetch the reminders based on the list because each list will have different reminders. And then we can create a reminder list view which is going to be displaying the reminder itself. But the first question is, well, how do we go about in getting all the reminders? One of the ways you can do that is by saying my list dot reminders, and you will be able to get all the reminders. Make sure that you have the reminders property over there. Since we created this by hand, you will see that we don't really have any reminders properties, but that's not a big deal. We can just go ahead and add a reminders property right there. There we go. So this is our reminders property, which is NS set. And if you were generating this code automatically, then this property would have been added automatically for you. But since we are handwriting this because of the UI colored thing, uh, you have to write this property yourself. Going back, we can now access the reminders by using list, which is reminders. Now reminders over here is NS set. Now you need to convert it to an array. The problem is that even if you do convert it to an NS array or some sort of an array uh, of reminder type, then it's going to be a brand new array and all of that particular um, tracking will go away. Meaning if you add a new reminder, then the list will not really know from a UI standpoint. So what can we do to accommodate with this issue? One of the things we can do is we have the list over here, which is a my list, and based on the my list, we can create a fetch request to get all the reminders. So in the init, this means that I can pass in the reminder, I mean the list itself. And once we get the list over here, we can assign it to my list. There we go. And now we can go ahead and perform the fetch request, assigning it to the reminder results. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a fetch request over here. Fetch request with the sort descriptors, nothing, just empty. Private, and this will be reminder results. 
which will be fetch results. Now fetch results is used to display something on the screen. So fetch results, if you look at their documentation, the main purpose of the fetch results is that uh, they you can iterate through them. They are actually conforming to random access collection. Uh, and the good another good thing is that since we're using the fetch request property wrapper, all of these reminder results will have tracking built in, meaning if they change, the fetch request is gonna fire again and your UI will be up to date. So that's a great thing about this. Inside the initializer, we can go ahead and initialize reminder results to a fetch request. And we're going to use a automatically generated private property, which is reminder results. If I try to use reminder results over here, I won't be able to assign it as you'll see. And I can create a fetch request passing in the fetch request. Now, currently I don't really have any fetch request over here. Um, let's say that if I pass in reminder.fetch request, and if I build it, you can already see the problem over here. You can see that cannot assign to the read-only property reminder results, and you can't even pass in this part, which we will have to figure out. But we can assign it to underscore reminder results, which is a private property automatically generated. Okay, now this part, currently it's saying that it's going to give you all the reminders all right, now we don't really want all the reminders. We want all the reminders based on the list. So we can go ahead and write our fetch request over here with the predicate, or we can go and organize our code a little bit better by writing this request in our reminder service. So let's go ahead and jump into reminder service. And what we want to write is a brand new function. Function which will be static, get reminders by list. Now, most of the time, or you can see pretty much all the time, the reminder service is not really going to return you an array of the reminder type or array of something. It's always going to be returning you the request, which will be fed to the fetch request property wrapper. So if you want to call your reminder service something else, or if you want to change the name of the function from get reminders by list to get reminders fetch request by list, you can do that. We're gonna pass in the my list. And you can see that it's not really going to return our reminders over here. What we're going to return is the fetch request. There we go, okay. Now inside over here, we're going to create a fetch request. That fetch request, will be based on getting all the reminders. So that's why the fetch request right here is getting all the reminders. Uh, the sort descriptor is empty. We don't really care about sorting right now. And we will go ahead and return it. Now currently there is no predicate. So there's no where clause over here. So we can go ahead and say request.predicate. And we can say predicate will be set based on the list property, remember the list property in the reminder? Let's go ahead and check it out in the reminder model. If you check out the reminder model, you can see that these are the attributes and there's a list property over here, all right? Which is of type my list. So basically what we're saying, that the list has to be equal to the thing that we will supply and we can write and over here also, the is completed property will have to be false. So we are only interested in fetching the reminders that are not completed. If they are completed, we don't really care about them. My list. So what's gonna happen is that my list is going to be injected right there. And then this is going to compare against my list. And it's also going to compare that if the is completed is false. And you can already see in the reminders model, I have the is completed property right there. So get reminders by list is going to return you a fetch request. And this is something that we can feed into our fetch request property wrapper. So if we go back to our code, instead of calling it over here, I mean, you can write it over here if you want to, that's perfectly fine. You can create a fetch request over here if you want to. I'm just gonna say, reminder service dot get reminder by list 
and like this. Okay. Sometimes I think people also like that if you don't want to use a reminder service because it kind of looks weird. Um, sometime I think people can do so you can do something like this also if you say reminder dot get reminders by my list uh, that is fine also I mean you just have to create a new file for the reminder and add that static function uh, but we're just keeping it simple we just have a reminder service uh, for our whole app and that is just going to give us the uh, reminders you can call this service something else if you want to that is also fine Okay, so whenever we land on the my list detail view and pass in the my list in the constructor initializer, we are going to, to call this fetch request and get the results. And now we can pass in the results to our brand new control called reminder list view. So let's go ahead and create a brand new control over here, which we will call reminder list view. Reminder list view. The job of the reminder list view, as the name suggests, is to only show the reminders, and that's it. Okay, so reminder list view, let reminders fetch results and reminder. Now, one of the things over here is that you still need to be passing something to your Xcode preview, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and comment this out because it's pretty hard to actually pass in the reminders right now. If we figure it out, we will do that. And that is why we are always using the uh, pinning effect. Well, like if I go over here, we can uh, pin a particular Xcode preview, like the one that I'm doing over here, so that we can view it in different scenarios in different views. Now, We'll go back to our my list detail view and I'll call it reminder list view, passing in the reminders, which will be reminder results. Great. So the only job now that is left to do is to go into the reminder list view and display these reminders. And that is pretty much it. Okay. So let's go ahead and display the reminders. We'll quickly go over the reminders using a list. We will get a reminder. And now we can go ahead and simply display the reminder. So reminder.title. Just wanted to see if the reminders are shown or not. We can refactor this and we can add a reminder cell view in the future. But right now we're just trying to see, are we able to see the reminders or not? And there we go. You can actually see that these are what the couple of reminders that we actually saved and we are able to see by groceries reminder green list too. Let's go to the purple list and you can see that it is actually returning you the reminders based on the selected category. There's no reminders on orange. Pretty cool, right? So we were able to get that. We can even refactor this a little bit more by saying that we can add a reminder cell view also. Now, reminder cell view does have a lot of things going on, like it needs to display an image for a check mark or a not a check mark. It needs to display some other things, uh, notes and all of those things. So we will have to go ahead and create our reminder cell view in the next lecture. So let's go to the next lecture and find out how we can create a reminder cell view.